you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to solve the question on your own before listening on. In part A of the question, we're being asked to calculate the tangential acceleration of a point on the rim of the flywheel. The fact that the point is on the rim of the flywheel tells us that that point is located a full radius from the center of the circle. Now to calculate that tangential acceleration, we simply have to multiply the angular acceleration, which is given to us in a standard unit, by the radius, which is given to us in centimeters, so we can convert that into meters by moving the decimal over two times to the left. And when you compute that, you should get approximately 0 0.402 meters per second squared. So this would be the correct answer to part A of the question. Now for part B, we are asked to calculate the radial acceleration of that same point when the flywheel is spinning at full speed. Spinning at full speed simply means that it's now rotating at the 2760 revolutions per minute. Now this is not tangential acceleration, it's radial acceleration and that has a different formula. Let's take a look at it. And we can see that the radial acceleration is equal to the angular speed squared times the radius. And again the radius was given to us in the question. The angular speed is also given, but it's given to us in a non-standard unit of revolutions per minute. So what we're going to have to do is convert that into radians per second. So let's see how we can do that. And we can begin by writing it as revolutions per minute. And then we know that one revolution is equivalent to two pi radians. So that's going to cancel out the revolutions. And we also know, of course, that one minute is equivalent to 60 seconds. So that will cancel out the minutes and leave us with the standard unit of radians per second for that angular speed. Now don't forget to square it and then we're going to multiply by the radius. Again, let's convert that into meters. And when you work that all out, you should get roughly 2.36 times 10 to the third meters per second squared. And this would be the correct answer to part B. For part C, to calculate the distance that this point moves during the spin-up, we can actually calculate the angular displacement first, which is the delta theta. And then once we have that angular displacement, we can convert that into a distance. And we'll see how to do so momentarily. But first, let's calculate the angular displacement using one of our equations from kinematics. It might be helpful to first write down what we know. So we had that initial angular speed, the final angular speed, and the angular acceleration. Pause the video and see if you can pick the correct equation in order to solve for the delta theta and hopefully you settle on this equation. So let's write this out and then solve it for delta theta. And solving for delta theta is simplified if we note again that the initial angular velocity is zero. So we can actually cancel that term out. And so then we can just divide by two alpha to isolate the angular displacement. And then at this point, we can go ahead and plug in the known values. Remember that for the final angular velocity, we're going to have to convert it from revolutions per minute into radians per second. So we'll show that conversion. So in blue, we've shown that conversion once again from revs per minute to radians per second. When you work this all out, maybe we'll come over here, you should get roughly 2.94 times 10 to the third radians would be the unit of the angular displacement. Now remember, we're not looking for angular displacement, we're looking for distance, which is measured in meters. And luckily there's a nice conversion from angular displacement into distance. And that conversion is the distance equaling the radius times the angular displacement. So we'll plug in those two values to get the distance. And we end up with a distance of approximately 83.2 meters. And this is the correct answer to part C. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel. Remember, you can send in your own question to this email address and I'll do my best to answer it on YouTube.